Let's now try to determine if one group of students does better than the other group, regardless of how long they take to finish the exam. So we're looking at the same data we did in the last video, the calculator group versus the no calculator group. Of course, this is talking about the TI-83 calculator, not that they have no calculator at all, but the second group uses a lesser calculator, one that doesn't have as many programmable features. Okay, so it says, let's now try to determine if one group of students is better than the other group, regardless of how long they take to finish the exam. At the 5% significance level, test the claim. So we see that it's a hypothesis test, right? Test the claim that the probability distributions associated with the calculator group is shifted to the right of the other group. Okay, so what we're looking at here then, if you look at it here, is they're saying that uh, we're talking about the probability distributions being shifted to the right of the other one. So we're saying the calculator group is shifted to the right. So what that essentially would mean is that the median for the calculator group would be higher than the median for the non-calculator group. All right, so let's go ahead and run that test. And when I look at the data, and based on our description of the data, we know that these are independent samples because either the person used the calculator or they didn't. There's no overlap in the groups. There's no dependency in the groups. So the calculator group and the no calculator group are independent groups. There are independent samples drawn from those groups. And now what we're going to do is run the Wilcoxon rank sum procedure. And the hint that we're going to use that technique as opposed to, say, the independent t-test is that they ask us to test if the probability distributions are shifted if the calculator group is shifted to the right of the other group, and that's a kind of typical language you find in Wilcox and rank sum. It also is usually the language that you see in non-parametric procedures as a whole. So let's go ahead and talk about the claim then. Again, if I want to discuss the medians here, I would want to say that the median for the calculator group is greater than the median for the non-calculator group, because that's what this is saying, right? It says the probability distributions with the calculator group is shifted to the right. So we'd say that basically, eta for the calculator group is greater than the median or eta for the no calculator group, right? So that's the notation. Now, for HO, we'd be saying the median for the calculator group is less than or equal to the median for the non-calculator group. And again, why less or equal to? Because this symbol implies that the claim and HA are the same here in this problem. So median for the calculator group is greater than the median for the non-calculator group would be the HA, and so the HO has to reflect the opposite idea, which would be less than or equal to. All right, now let's jot down alpha for later use. So alpha is 0.05 in this problem, it says, right? And what we want to do next is to actually come up with the rank total. So we have to rank all of this data. Remember, we treat the entire set of data as if it's one big set of data, right? So we don't treat them separately at first. We treat them as one big set of data. We rank them. Once we have all the ranks done, then we total the rows separately so that we have two separate rank totals. Let me do that here. I'm going to get the um, rank total for the calculator group and the rank total for the non-calculator group. Now, incidentally, I want to also identify the fact that the sample sizes are the same. They're both 10 here, right? Because we looked at, um, it says, the again, the data is a random selection of the students who took the third exam. And we see that there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 different students here in this group and 10 different students in this group. So the sample sizes are equal for both groups. And that's the case we can use either one of these totals as our test statistic, right? Normally, we use the smaller sample size um, total as our test statistic, but we don't have a smaller one here, so either one will suffice. Okay, let's go ahead and get the rank totals. Now, to do that, we actually want to rank all the data. That takes a long time, and we have other videos that are devoted to that. So what I'm going to do is actually show you the answer to that part, because I've done that already for us. So here's the ranking for the two groups. Again, I'll handle these ties now, like as a separate step of the problem, right? These circled values here were tied. I circled them to identify that they were tied. So what I would like to do now is adjust the numbers here because it's not fair to give this one eight and give this one nine, right? So what I want to do is fix that by doing the average of the two ranks. So I would add them together, eight plus nine, that would give me 17, I'd divide by two, and that's gonna give me eight and a half. So essentially I'm looking for the number between these two since there's just two of them that are tied. And of course I get the answer eight and a half in that case. So that's going to be the new ranks. Instead of eight and nine, I'll give them both eight and a half. And it's the same here with these two at the end, right? It'll be 19 and a half and 19 and a half. Of course, for this one, it doesn't matter as much because these are going to be added together for this rank total. So it wouldn't have as much of an effect as if we forget to adjust it here. 
Okay, now remember we had 20 total values. So I just want to remind you that when we do our rank totals, the total values, I mean the total rank for this one and the total rank for this one, if you add those rank sums together, we should get this as an answer. It should be n times n plus 1 over 2, which in our case would be 20 times 21 over 2, which is going to be 210, if you work that out, because half of 20 is 10, 10 times uh, 21 is 210. So our total should be 210 when we're done. Let's add these up and see if we do get a total of 210. Okay, so we'll have 4 plus 8.5 plus 16 plus 1 plus 5 plus 14 plus 11 plus 17 plus 6 plus 7. And we get the answer 89.5. So that's this guy's rank sum. So the total rank sum for the calculator group is 89.5. And the one for the non-calculator group is going to be, let's see. Well, we'll have 19 and a half twice, right? 19.5 plus 19.5 plus 13 plus 2 plus 15 plus 8.5 plus 18 plus 12, plus 13, right? 3 and 10 is 13. All right, we get 120.5, 120.5. Let's add these together and see what number we get. If we take 124.5 and add to it 89.5, we should get 210, and sure enough, we do. Okay, good, so once we know that that's correct, our next step of the problem then is to simply take these answers, put them on our paper, and use them as our test statistic. So remember we had 89.5 here, and our total for the non-calculator group was 120.5. It doesn't matter which one we take as our test stats, I'm going to go ahead and use this as my test statistic since it doesn't actually matter which one I use. Now let's go get the critical value. In order to get the critical value, we have to consider the sample size in the problem. The sample sizes for the first population is 10, the sample size for the second population is also 10, or the second sample, right? Sample size for the first one is 10, second one is 10. The alpha is 0.05, but remember that it's 0.05 in, in this case, one tail, because it's a right-tailed test that we're dealing with. So it's just in one tail. Now, what we're gonna do for the rejection region is to look at this variable here, this T uh, total or rank total for the calculator group, and consider what our rejection region will be. We can reason it out before, and then I'll show you the chart again that I've created to help you through this, but let's reason it out together if we wanted to think it through on our own. We'd have to say what? If, we're, if our HO is saying that the um, non-calculator group is less than or equal to the uh, eta for the, sorry, the calculator group is less than or equal to the eta for the non-calculator group, if that's the thing we're testing, when would we reject this? Well, we reject it whenever HA looks to be true, and HA will look to be true whenever we see that the, the calculator group's median seems higher, and we'll notice that by noticing that the rank sum for the calculator group would be very large compared to the critical value. So in this case, we'd be looking for this calculator group total to be larger than the critical value. So basically, we should reject if we see what? If we see that if this is T upper, if we see that our T for the calculator group ends in here, then we know we should reject. That's the idea. Now let's see if that's matched by what I had on my chart. Okay, so let's look at it. I've done this, I did this for us last night, right? So we have this here, and you can see that when you look at it, um, we have the three different cases, right? Now ours is a scenario where we're dealing with a right-tailed test. So we're saying that the calculator group is greater than the non-calculator group. That's how we wrote our claim, if you look back at your claim on the paper. Now, from here, if we decide to use T1 as our test statistic, then it means that we are going to reject whenever T1 is greater than or equal to T upper. And that's what I've shown here. The T for the calculator group, which is our first population, our first sample, I should say, if that's greater than or equal to T upper, in other words, it's in here, we're going to reject the null hypothesis. Okay, so that's what we're looking for to see if that number is actually large enough to cause a rejection. I can tell that it's probably not going to be since, in fact, the total for the non-calculator group is actually higher, right? 
So it's probably not going to be big enough to land in that rejection region. But to be sure, we better go look up our values using these, these criteria. So let's go do that now and look at our Wilcox and rank sum table to figure out the critical value for the test. Okay, so I'm on the Wilcox and rank sum table and I'm looking for 0.05 and one tail. That's this bottom box down here. And then I'm going to be looking for N1 is 10 and N2 is 10. So N1 is 10, N2 is 10. I get the values 83 and 127 for T lower and T upper. So it's 83 and 127. Okay, so our T upper value turns out to be 127. So now we're going to compare that against our test stat, which as we see falls short of the rejection region. So we're going to say do not reject HO and therefore do not support HA. And once you see that, you notice that our claim is the same as HA, so we're going to use this wording, the sample data does not support the claim. The sample data does not support the claim. Okay, and of course, the claim here is that the calculator group has a higher median grade than the non-calculator group. It seems to be that based on this sample, that isn't true. 